Coast Hip Hop. And like I say, every from the West Coast to the East Coast and everything in between, folks. From Eve After Dark to Concerts in the Park, you are live with your boy Lonzo, the godfather of West Coast Hip Hop, and my homie, Jim and I. Yes, sir. What's up with you, Doc? What up, my man? I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic, man. Got a little back I- issue today, but I'm all right. Mm. You and me both, Playboy. Come on, well, man. first of all, first of all, before we get started, I know we uh, were supposed to do the show on Tuesday, uh, but I want to wish you a happy belated 420. I'm not sure if you, you partake every once in a while, right? Man, I uh, partake. In fact, I was out in Temecula doing a 420 event uh, Tuesday. Oh, man. okay. And, nice, uh, nice. The situation right then. Uh, did some uh, tasting of various uh, strains and wine and shit. Just got back home nice. today. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, sir. Oh, dope. dope, dope. Well, before we get into the news, you know, things that happened this week and a couple other things I want to talk about. Um, tell me about Thai stick and some of that old school oh. weed you you players used to smoke back in the day. <laughs> Look, man, you're gonna make me, gonna make me cry. Man, come on. <laughs> you're gonna make me cry. But you know, before I do that, man, I don't know if you heard or not, but I just heard, man, the shot G died. No, please tell me that's not true. I just saw it on, I was before I came on live. Oh, wow. I just was on my Facebook page and Instagram, and they were giving a, a, a RIP to shot G. I'm just, looking it up right now. Sources okay, so sources say so it's not one hundred percent official, but it doesn't look good. Jock G is died. Okay, I'm seeing look, people post it, but we all know people jump to conclusions. So yeah. let's hope that that's not true. But I do see a few people at post. Really sad to hear about Shock G's passing. He brought so many people much joy. Rest in peace. Someone else posted Shock G has died at fifty seven, according to Digital Underground co founder Chopmaster J. So that would be a good source. That would be oh a, man. Uh, I'm gonna call Atrian Atrian Energy uh Shock G. I'm gonna give Atrian yeah. A, he was out of town for a while. I'm finding out what happened for sure. But yeah, that, that just hit my timeline right before I walked to, uh sat down in the chair, Doc. Right before I hit the oh, chair. Oh wow. I'm sure as soon as this show's over, it's gonna be everywhere if it is in fact true. Um, damn, what a legend, man. Um he when I first listened to their music back in the day. I didn't know where the hell they were from. I didn't, I didn't realize they were from Northern California, just a couple hundred miles from where I was sitting, but they had like this outer space type of where are these dudes from? Shock G is very instrumental in uh, being a, one of the more creative people from the West Coast. Shock uh, yeah. G is, uh, of course, my partner, Adrian, who is his manager. Uh, mm-hmm. He is a trained, classical trained pianist. Okay, Yes, he is. He, he is a very talented dude. To the piano and rock it from Beethoven to George Clinton. I mean, he does hmm. at, at Bernie Worrell type situation. So, um, but I know also he had his issue. So I hope, uh, yeah, if if he has passed, my brother rest in peace. Um, and if not, y'all stop spreading lies about people. I um I have one shock G story I used to promote in Long Beach, and I actually got him on a show, and he was a real cool dude. One of the the only very few rappers that was just cool, no issues, no money. Like I want more of this, this and that. Um, and at the end of the night, he took me out to his car. It was an Alfa Romero, a little small dope ass foreign Alfa Romero. Um, Cause he said, Hey, do you want, want some CDs? I'm, I'm converting, I've converted everything to digital. I'm trying to get rid of these CDs. He gave me like, I'm not even exaggerating two, 300 CDs of just, and I just took the box and yeah, man, that was my shock G story. Never, never saw him again. And wow. Great night. Interesting. Uh, mm. Getting back to the subject at hand, you was asking about the girl. Yeah, the old school weed that you players used to smoke back in the day, man. You know, um, man, back in the day, we didn't have a lot of choices. We didn't have all the various strains that they have right now. You had the uh, cheap Mexican weed that was, you mm. know, uh, uh, five finger, four finger dime, two finger nickels. I mean, I mean yeah, two finger, four finger dime, uh, four finger dime, two finger nickels. Then so show had, people, it was, it was pretty much like this, right? This yeah. is how much weed you would get in the bag, right? That was an ounce, okay? That Damn. was an ounce. That was a half ounce, okay? And you had to, if you lay it on the side, you would, if you took your fat finger, your fat finger fan with you, that would tell you how thick it had to be, okay? Gotcha. That, that's your width, that's your thickness, okay? Mm. And um, that was, that's how we measured our weed. And then, uh, then you had the, the Columbia, okay? 
uh, the Columbia, you had Columbia, then you had Acapulco Gold. Okay. Okay. But uh, Columbia and Acapulco Gold was rare to find. But one thing about that stuff, man, when you if you found that some of that right there, whatever your mood was, it was gonna make it that much better. Okay. I, I you would laugh. You would you would laugh hilariously. Off of, I, I think it must have had some, uh, what you call it, laughing gas in it? Laughing gas and shit, nitric oxide or something. <laughs> I mean, it would have you laughing your ass off, okay? Um, uh, but back then, back then, the what you look for, uh, what you look for, and if you could find it, because it was rare as hell, was Almighty Tie Stick. Okay? Tie Stick. Okay, so that was the top. That was the top shelf, right? That was the top for where we were of my era. Okay, they uh-huh. had better stuff. But now, for a layman, was it was it really from Thailand? Uh, they say it was from Thailand, and it was literally wrapped on a stick about this long. Right. And it was wrapped on had a, had a little red string around, a little small red string string around it. And dude, you didn't you you could roll a pinhead joint. I mean, a one a one paper zigzag joint. And you're done. You're yeah. done. Okay. Um, and, and it was um, it was it was uh, the cream de la creme, as they say, man. You if you could find that when you found it. And back then, back then, a stick was twenty bucks in the seventies. Okay. Mm. A stick was twenty bucks. Okay, if you can find one. Okay. And uh, I never forget one time I was trying to find a a a. a uh, so t- rumor has it, tie stick was in Compton. Mm-hmm. I go get some. I'm, I take my buddy to go get this tie stick. I give him the money. It was only ten dollars, which was maybe suspicious. No, oh, I don't. Sorry, I gave him a twenty. He came back with ten, and he came back with the wrong stick. He came back with a Sherm stick. Oh, he- what? Oh, hell no! Totally different wait, wait, drug. Wait. He, told, he told my dumb ass, "Oh man, it's even more powerful than than than, than, the, than the tie stick." Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> man, I smoked that shit. Hit two hits. Two hits. It took me 45 minutes to get from Long Beach and Rosecrans to Rosecrans and Central. Damn. So you hit the Sherm stick. Woo. I finally got the Rosecrans and Central <laughs> Kenny shoes. And just so happened, man, the uh but they, but in Kenny's you had the manager, assistant manager, and the third man. The third okay. man he was like a he was like a high ranking salesperson. Well, the third man was there. The manager wasn't there, and the assistant manager wasn't there. The third man was in charge. Okay, and me and him was cool. He let me go sit in the stock room, man. And then I came out. I was lit, and he, he said, "Drink the milk. Drink the milk. You come down." Mm-hmm. And I drank that milk. I threw milk up all over the goddamn mm-hmm. shoe department, all over the ladies' shoes and Compton, man. Uh, Damn, it was horrible. It was fucking damn. Crazy. So anybody who doesn't know Sherm Stick is PCP, also known as water, angel dust, right? Been psyched the dean, not to be dealt with, not to be messed yeah. with, not to be messed with, not to be messed with. I repeat, not to be messed with. Yeah, and as you're talking about it, my nose is shriveling up because I know the smell. I, my best friend used to live in Compton, and someone in the area used to always smoke it, and you could it smells horrible, dude. Yeah, it, it was it was not it was not. To um yeah cat smoke that right there you're trying to change your brain your a molecular structure of your brain forever okay yeah i've heard people that hit it 10 years down the line they still have effects from it i have a cousin right now been in been in been in, been in the uh mental mental the uh mental institution since 1973 behind sherm wow never he hit it a couple times never he never he never recovered and he's been there ever since First cousin's been in the he's been there at least it's about 73, 74. Okay. That's mm. no, no 74, 75. When I was in high school, he, he's, he's a year old, he's a couple years older than me. And he went in when I was in high school. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's to be done. But yeah, man. Uh we had a different thing, man. You know, like I said, uh it was I mean when, when I first saw, because I had stopped, I had mm-hmm. stopped messing with weed completely. Uh when I when I when I saw that weed had went from uh, four finger dimes, two finger <laughs> small ass bags for twenty bucks. Are you out of your mind? I'm not smoking that. <laughs> Give you nobody. My, in my like, mind, it's, uh-huh. it's some things. 
That's and funny. Oh man, I just can't. I can't adjust to. Okay, mm-hmm. it's real difficult for me to adjust to a small little bag of weed. Okay, for twenty dollars. Okay, mm-hmm. it, dude. We talking about yeah. two joints. Okay, even I mean, even in the in the dispensary prices, man, it's like, huh? So it was real hard for me. And even I tell you something else. I had a debate the other day with my new assistant. We we're talking about shoes. Uh huh. She she likes she she now she's in the shoe and well I just a casual conversation. Uh, what's the most you pay for pay for a pair of shoes? She said, oh, I pay six hundred dollars for these right here. Six hundred dollars. Then she was showing me some shoe some shoe sites on um on YouTube and they were selling shoes for twenty five hundred bucks. I'm like, okay, what's really going on here? So my mind cannot wrap around that. Okay, yeah. I can't fathom a pair to a pair of tennis shoes worth twenty five hundred bucks. I can't do it. Yeah, really hundred bucks, maybe a maybe hundred and twenty tops, maybe a hundred twenty. Okay, you know, um, you know when I, I've been buying, I'm a shoe person. Mm-hmm. I, I as a man, I have over a hundred pair of shoes. Okay, mm-hmm. I I may hey. have less than a hundred pair right now because my feet haven't grown since I don't know since the seventies, and. I used to, I, I would buy shoes, you know, that was my thing, okay? Mm-hmm. I had to be clean. And uh, I don't wear them that much as I used to, so they last forever, okay? My biggest right. problem is sometimes they'll dry out because I, I buy a lot of eel skins. I buy a lot of exotic skins, and they'll dry okay. out. If you, don't sh- if you don't polish them and shine them or whatever, ah. they'll dry out sometimes. <laughs> Excuse me. The, the most I spent for a pair of shoes with my... Um, I have about seven pair of eel skin gaiters. I mean, eel skin shoes. And they okay. Cost, they cost me about 100 to 175 a piece, depending where I bought them from. Okay. I've had buddies to pay 1500 for alligators and, and uh, other other uh, ostrich or whatever. That's not my thing. I've, I've got a $150 budget when it comes to uh, to my boots and uh, Stacy's. A good pair of Stacy's might cost you 125 I mean, that's mm-hmm. I can buy. I, I understand that. I can understand. Stacy's, yeah. For sure. Workmanship that goes into a good pair of shoes, okay, fine. But I can't see that for plastic and leather. I mean, I'm, I ain't ready for that yet. I ain't ready. I feel you on that. Pair I feel of, you on that. Well, much love, Gaddafi, Cadillac Gaddafi, uh, Pimp Players Hustlers Network, Michael Anders in the house, D Minor, Cornelius Rice. What's up, folks? Much love to everybody for tuning in. You live with Lonzo and Dusty Vision. 